Well, indeed, it is our smallest carnivore that we get on land here in the Sabi Sands. And this particular one is being as cute as possible. Look at its little nose go. It's busy sniffing us and lots of scratching and grooming going on. And I really, really love these guys. And they were noticeably absent this morning. We didn't see one set of dwarf mongoose. And normally we see quite a few as we drive around in a morning drive. They're often out on the termite mound sunning themselves. And well, this morning it was all very quiet. I've also spotted some other little creatures that are starting to come out, which is fantastic. And so these dwarf mongoose look as though they've just been down at sort of treehouse dam. And there's one on actually on the tree stump itself. It's just see its tail disappearing behind the knot. There you go. You were there somewhere. So I just saw a little tail disappear inside there. There it is. Hello. Are you having a little look around? Now, this is the perfect place for these guys to move around. They can forage in and amongst these trees. They'll be able to look out for scorpions that live inside those knotted, tangled bits of bark. They'll also be wood boring insects and grubs that could potentially be there and so for dwarf mongoose it's a great place there's also nice hidey holes now in the background you can hear a lapwing that isn't happy and that's because some warthogs have just walked right where its nest is so at the back on the other side of the water is where the warthogs are and that's why the lapwing is making so much noise you can see there is the little baby warthog the offender that had walked very close to the eggs and when lapwings have eggs they'll make a lot of noise when something like that walks close by and what they're trying to do is basically push them away from where the eggs are and make sure that they don't actually stand on the eggs themselves so it's a very clever tactic and they'll open their wings out and they'll make a big show to try and chase them away and well job well done because there go the warthogs off and into the distance and our dwarf mongoose is watching all of this just thinking to itself well, I'm glad I'm not on that side of the water better to be on this side so Justin you're wondering how small a dwarf mongoose is when it's born well they are tiny 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 no bigger than probably the size of my hand with the tail included so they are very very little when they are first born and they probably weigh I would say no more than a hundred grams would be about or maybe a little bit more maybe 100 to 150 grams would be about the size of them they are minute not quite as small as what you'd see a squirrel baby but a little bit bigger than that but not tiny i mean not big either so really quite small little things and ones that are very very delicate and like i say they would probably fit like this from head to the base of the tail and then the little tail that would go across there so that would be about the size of a baby mongoose which would be very cute wouldn't you agree now our mongoose has just come out again and are you going to have a lie down there it's almost lying down like it's a swimsuit model now it's got its legs out and it's kind of got its head up posing in the sunshine and you know those swimsuit models that sit on the beach with the waves lapping up now all we need is some waves lapping up by its tail and you could be on the calendar of the next sports illustrator young mongoose yes i agree you do look good from that side oh i'm gonna just get a little scratch no, that's not so ladylike. Now, I'm not sure if it is a boy or a girl. Obviously, it's quite difficult with mongoose to tell, but <laughs> then we go. Seb, can you come here quickly? So, my world, you say they're similar to mere cats in their inquisitive ways. Well, I agree with you, my world. They are very similar. But I've just noticed the same green spider that is once again with us. Now, this spider, I saw it the other day when I was sitting with Tumba and it was crawling around the dashboard of Rusty. And it is now the same one again. And there we go. Hello. Look at those big eyes. Did you see them? The big black eyes that were looking up at us. And it's trying to work out what's going on and it looks like a young jumping spider of sorts it's got that big rounded head and those massive eyes on the front of the body that are typical of the jumping spiders no don't go that way because we can't see your nice colors i want to see you in the sun but there can you see the two big black eyes in the front now jumping spiders are notoriously big eyed and the reason why they need big eyes is so that they can see what's going on they have almost binocular vision by having two big eyes in the front and then the other simple eyes more around there well small eyes sorry should i say around and they can then judge distance a lot better than most spiders because when they jump they need to be able to see where they're going and how far it is to be able to land safely and so that's why they have that binocular vision as opposed to other spiders that have small eyes dotted all around the head 
very cool and you can see how it moves its head all the time to look at what's going on it's also got perfect camouflage for my dashboard you can see that sort of green is quite similar and it actually sitting there in the shade blends in very well see that not going to be easy to see that at all and if it was on a tree of some sort it would be almost impossible if the leaves were a lightish color and what are you doing that was quite cool now I don't think it left a thread I was trying to see if it maybe dropped a thread down but it doesn't seem to have done so So Justin, you always wonder how spiders would see our world. Well, Justin, they have a bit of a different eye to what we do. What are you doing? It's, this looks like a yo-yo spider. It's kind of going down and up as fast as it can. And it almost looks like a bungee jumping spider. And maybe that's what it's doing. It's just having a good time jumping up and down. There we go, back up again. <laughs> what are you doing? Now, Justin, their eyes are not like ours, so we've got very complicated eyes that are able to work out light and distance and judge quite far away and see very, very well. Spiders don't have the same situation. They've got simple eyes, um, sorry, compound eyes, not like what we do. And basically, Steph described this morning about flies having eyes and it's almost like a whole bunch of GoPros on their head. And it's the exact same thing with spiders, is that they'll have all of these lenses and it will basically make it quite difficult to see very far but they can see movement all around them and that means that if anything comes close they can then jump away or move away and try and protect themselves. The jumping spider's eyesight is much more developed because like I say they do jump and they do move and so they need to be able to see distance and be able to then land safely on the other side so their eyesight is slightly more developed than most of the other spiders. Most of the other spiders also don't need their eyesight for hunting because remember they construct these webs and as the animal then moves into the web so that they can then grab it and feed off it by injecting the venom and the web actually catches them so they don't need eyesight to hunt and they just need eyesight to pick up any sort of movement around them that they can then get away and so their eyes generally will pick up movement all around the body and so if you move your hand like this over a spider you'll see it'll often turn its fangs accordingly to try and defend itself it's really quite amazing to watch but I don't know where our suicidal spider went he seemed to drop down and that was the end of that now, 